about uh, what I'm doing in my business and um, something that's called three M's of success. Um, Nathan and I are really good friends. I look like I know some of you guys. When I at least see your picture, see your faces. I'm like, it's, she looks familiar, or you know, he looks familiar. And Pat's a good friend of mine. And I'm an internet marketer. I'm also a real estate investor. Again, my name is Corey Boatwright. I run an organization called Short Cellology, shortcellology.com. And what that is is an umbrella for um, several different businesses. Um, and they're all real estate related. They're all um, something technology, a software for real estate. Um, we've got several things going on. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my story. Um, I'm not going to bore you, I promise. And I'm going to give you what the three M's of success are because those are some of the things that have really helped me along the way. And after that, if you have any questions or anything like that, I'd be happy to answer them. Is that cool? Yep. All right, so um, I never graduated from high school. Um, I uh, basically uh, was one of those kids that was just uh, really ambitious at a very young age. Um, I've started over 40 different companies, and only two of them have succeeded. One of them was a technology business that I grew up to $4 million in my bedroom in about three and a half years, and then I sold it, and then I got involved with uh, real estate. But I read a book, and I know that many of you have read this book, but it's called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. How many people have read it? Show of hands. Okay. That book said, it's by Robert Kiyosaki, and it said that nine out of ten businesses fail. And when I read that, I got really excited because <laughs> I knew that I had to just start ten businesses, <laughs> and one of them was going <laughs> to succeed, right? Uh, instead of starting ten, I started 40. So I thought, man, I'm like, oh, it's really good, and one of these things is going to work, right? Um, I am um, one of those people that fail very, very quickly. Um, I think that one of the big travesties of things that are happening um, in our youth and colleges today is that they teach you that failing is incorrect. And you know what? I understand the idea of succeeding in everything is good, is positive. But the reality is you many times need to get in there and fail as soon as possible. Because that way you can learn, and then once you have that hands-on experience of learning, you can really take your business, take yourself to the next level. How many people agree with that? Yeah? So whenever you have a mindset that way, it really changes everything <coughs> that you do. Um, I remember talking to my friends. They were like, why don't you just be normal? Why don't you go to an eight to five job? Why don't you just go do all this and that? And I didn't want to do that because... I didn't want to live a normal life. I wanted to live an extraordinary life. And I had ambitions, just like many of you do. And once you put your heart and mind to something, there's really very few things that you cannot do. You just got to stay focused as much as possible. How many people agree with that? Cool. So um, whenever I uh, got more involved with real estate, I learned that it's one of those things that doesn't happen right away. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, you have to get out there and talk to a lot of people. And you have to get out there and get your bruises and your bumps. I used to uh, sell Kirby home cleaning systems. How many people ever have sold vacuum cleaners? I've got like three or four people in the room. So whenever I was selling Kirby's, I remember all I had to do was knock on 100 doors a day, and I put on three demos and then a sale. So it was a numbers game. 100 doors a day, three, three demos and then I'd get a sale. Um, and that was the best persistence training that I've ever had in my entire life because people hated me. They absolutely despised me. I remember going up to doors and I was just thinking, there's no way this person's going to let me in. It's not going to happen this time. And I would just laugh about it because I wanted to overcome that objection in your mind, that fear in your mind that holds you back from many things in life. And that's what, um, that's really what I want to talk about with these three M's of why these fears can hold you back from so many things in your life. I mean, there's nothing that you can't do if you put your mind to it. Literally, it, it really is that simple. I believe that, I believe that um, you know, whenever you ask God for direction in your life and you get really serious and get really focused with what that direction needs to be, you need to set a plan, set your goals, and then just go after them, you know? It's not the money that is the most motivating, even though that's one thing that is a huge motivator. 
The most successful people I've ever met in my entire life do not focus on money. What do you think they focus on? Results. Results. What else? Challenge. 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 What else? Providing value. Providing value. What else? Happiness. Happiness. Balance. Good one. What else? Balance. What else? Purpose. Purpose. Getting closer. Successful. Success. Those are all good things. And doing the behaviors that lead to the results. Sure. That's good. That's good. Those are all good things. They're all traits of this kind of over empowering one thing. And it's what the first M for success is. So you might want to write this down. The three M's of success. The first M is mindset. Mindset is so crucial. Let me share a story with you. There's a lady named Evelyn Adams. And you can go Google her. She won the lottery for $5.4 million, and now she lives in a trailer. You know what she said? She said, I didn't learn the word no. See, whenever you have wealth and money, it comes into your life, and you will have that as long as you respect it, you honor it, you understand what it is, you're wise with it. Whenever that comes into your life, if you don't have the mindset to be able to handle it, you'll lose your millions and you'll live in a trailer. Now, there's nothing wrong with living in a trailer, best you're very ambitious to do, but I think probably many people in here are not. All right, you have a little higher, probably, ambition than that. Um, so, Evelyn Adams won $5.4 million from the New Jersey lottery and lost it all. She lives in a trailer now. Said she didn't understand the word no. You have to understand when to say no and when to say yes when wealth comes into your life. Many people, and Nathan will attest, many people come into your life that all of a sudden, now they're your friends, <laughs> right? Now they're, and, it's, and this could be family members too. And you have to understand when is the wise time to be able to say yes, um, I can serve you, I can do some things, or no, you're going to turn around and make me a slave. And there's a big difference between serving others and being a slave to them. How many people agree with that? So whenever you serve others, you're really looking to say, how can I help you? Where's the synergy? What can we do together? Let's do it. And there's a genuine respect. Whenever someone becomes, they're enslaving you and you're enabling them, they're just a sucker. They just suck everything from you. They just want to gimme, 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 gimme. Right? And that is negative. That is going to be cancerous to your mindset. And so I want to encourage you that whenever wealth comes into your life to understand that being wise and having that mindset of how should I handle this when wealth comes in? What can I do? to get a bigger return you know, on this money? Who can I talk to that isn't a sucker, but is someone that creates synergy, right? Who can I work with as a partner, Chris uh, McLaughlin, Nathan Jerowitz, Patton Gibson, who can I work with that is going to be givers? Because that way our mindset's the same. How many people have heard the biblical term being equally yoked, right? Yeah, being equally yoked is important because it comes down to the mindset, the mindset of what you're in together. We're on the same page. We have the same vision. Here's a little trick for you. You might want to write this down. Whenever you're thinking about anything you want to do in your life, this is a little formula. This formula is awesome, too. Come up with the premise. Come up with the premise of whatever it is you want to do in life. If you want to make $500,000 this year, then come up with the premise of what is that? What is that to you? What does that mean to you? Come up with a vision. Come up with a vision. A vision is if it was ideally perfect, this perfect situation, how would you see yourself making that $500,000? That's your vision. That's your ideal. Now come up with a purpose. Why do you want the $500,000 anyway? Do you, want it, do you want it just to say I'm a baller? All right, and I can go buy nice cars and nice houses and all those things. Or do you want it because you want to give to others? Maybe you want to give to a charity? Maybe you want to give to your family? Right? So a, a purpose. And then come up with a strategy. And a strategy is what we're going to get into on the next M. And the next M is mechanics. Mechanics come down to the one, two, three steps of doing anything in your life. Anything whatsoever that's worth doing has a strategy involved. It really does. Because there's consistency involved with the strategy. And there's no such thing as big business. There's only small business duplicated. Keller Williams is not big business. 
It is small business duplicated. It's a bunch of people working together in other offices. It's one office cr just cranking it out, doing well, duplicating that system, duplicating that system, and now you have tons and tons of Keller Williams offices. How many Keller Williams offices? Over 700. 700? Over 700. Over 700. That's not one large, you see what I'm saying? It's small business duplicated. You have to have mechanics. Share a quick story about my personal success with mechanics. I was doing a lot of short sales. I had 150 in the hopper. I've done well over 400 personal short sales with students. We've done probably about 800, I mean double of that. I mean, we do them all over the country. I'm a loss mitigation company. You know, all of those things have students that part with, partner with me on deals. I was doing them this way. I was like, had like sticky notes all over the place, right? How many people still use sticky notes? If you do, you're not allowed to be in this room. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a technology nerd. So. But if you use these sticky notes, although they can be effective on things, they're not efficient, right? They're not that efficient. We live in a technology age, right? Let's get with that. We're in the technology age. It probably would be to our advantage to learn some of those things. Well, I started to uh, look at what if I could take this process of doing a short sale and cut it down into 10 hours of work to 5 hours of work? What would that look like? What was that? So that was my premise. Remember we talked about that? What's the next thing after premise? Who wrote it down? No. What's the premise? No. Who wrote, who wrote it down after, after premise? What's Vision. the next one? Or what do I, why do I Vision. Want to Vision. 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 What was my ideal? What was my ideal? of if I had this one, two, three strategy over here, if I had some mechanic, what was my idea? What would that look like? And guess what that came to me? It came to me in a software. I was like, all right, that would be cool. You could use the software to kind of cut these processes down. We could upload documents. Yeah, that would save time. We could create usernames for other people to log in, and that would, that would save some time. So start thinking about that process more. What's the next one after vision? Purpose. purpose. You know what my big why was? I wanted, uh, that's, that's important. Time for yourself is important. But I wanted to help some people in my life, some very special people in my life that were going through some very difficult times. And that was my big why. And I thought, wow, if I could do this, I'm going to have more time to be able to help this particular person in my life, um, this family in my life. And what's the last one after that? Strategy. All right, let's get to it. Let's take action. Remember what Nathan says? We're on these webinars. Take action now. Click the button below, right? That is what you do in life. You have to take action. You've got to click the button below and get a strategy together, right? So that's what I did. I said, all right, so what do I need? Well, I need to have some software guys. Well, I know I used to do a little bit of programming, so I need to go find some software guys. Uh, what else do I need? Um, I really need to find out, like, what do I want to do? Like, how's this thing going to look afterwards? So I started charting it all out, wire, wireframing and everything all out. And then fast forward <laughs> to what happened. We had over 5,000 users paying $97 a month. Now, not all of them were paying $97 a month because we did a big test. But you can add, take the numbers in your head, and it was pretty exciting, right? Um, we charged $2,000 a setup for that. So each one of those were $2,000, so it, it grew really fast. And then I ended up buying out my partner and some other stuff. But the point is, is that's a perfect example of mechanics, right? It's a perfect example of getting a premise, then getting a what? Vision, Vision. then getting a what? Purpose. Purpose, and then getting a what? Strategy. Strategy. Okay, that's, that really is anything you're looking at in your life. Think about it in those chunks. Chunk it down. Things aren't that complicated. Talent is overrated. <laughs> it really is. You're, you're just as smart as anyone else out there, or even smarter. It doesn't take much for you to train yourself to be better at what it is, to educate yourself. You know, read some books on things you want to reach. It. Don't think that there's this one genius person out there that does all of it. But there's no such thing as big business, small business duplicated. And you know what a small business is? It's a bunch of people working on the same team together that are in congruency. They know what they're supposed to do, and they get it done. All right, so the last one is um, what you would think should be the first one. And what do you think it is? 
What would the what would the last M be? So we got money. What's the first one? Money. What was the first one? Mindset. 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 What was the second one? Mechanics. What do you think the last one? Motivation. Money. money. Uh, I think it is money. Money. Here's why this is last in that in that order. If you don't have a healthy mindset and money comes in your life, you'll lose it like Evelyn Adams did. Remember, $5.4 million, she won the lottery, New Jersey lottery. Said she couldn't learn, learn, to, uh, learn the word no. She lost it and lives in a trailer. A guy named William Budd, you can Google this, $16.2 million. He won the Pennsylvania lottery. Now he lives on Social Security. And he actually got a million dollars in debt. Do you think that it was about the money? If he had a good mindset, do you think that he'd be in debt? Probably good odds and not, right? What about Evelyn Adams? Would she have lost everything if she had a good mindset with it? It's so crucial. I know it sounds so weird and all that, and I get intense up here because I get excited and I want to transfer that. Um, but this is serious stuff. I mean, this can literally change the way you think. If you really grasp those little three things, you know, mindset, mechanics, and money. When you have a good mindset, but you have no mechanics, you're a dreamer. You're just a dreamer. Now you got to find a way to systemize it. you got to find a way to franchise it. You know, all these, you know, 1-800, whatever, uh, you know, homebusters, all these other guys out there. And I know some guys have homebusters franchises, but you're seeing more and more of these things come up where there's like virtual, it's like a franchise without walls, right? I mean, these are, people are figuring out that you just got to put a system together. You just got to have some mechanics and put a system together so that way you have some congruency. That way you have, um, you can put a software together. It doesn't matter what it is. It's your system, okay? And it needs to work for you, and you need to be able to teach it. You need to be able to teach it because at the end of the day, the hardest thing for an entrepreneur to do um, is to let go of control. How many people, be really honest, you're control freaks. Right? And you know what? My hand's raised too. It's one of the hardest things to do is to let go. Listen to what I'm saying. If you don't get anything else today, listen to what I'm getting ready to say. When you let go, you actually get more control. When you let go, you actually maintain more control. Because then you're forced to find other people, Nathan, Patton, Dallas, Jenna, all these other people that are rock stars at what they do. And you want to find those rock stars because that's going to allow you to focus on other things so you can go duplicate your good thing over here that's running, right? Your vision of whatever that is. Does that make sense? Yes? Mm -hmm. Control is so hard and it gives you the most stress. Guess what? We all die from heart attacks from Stress. Stress. Mm -hmm. everything, everything. Not eating hamburgers as much, even though it's bad. Not <coughs> drugs, even though they're bad. Freaking stress. <laughs> stress. We don't take care of ourselves because we, everything has to be on our shoulders. Money is an idea. I have a few more minutes here. I appreciate your time. Money is an idea. Money in itself is not worth anything. It's printed paper. It's a barter system that we created a long time ago, and now it's all jacked up. Our dollar's not even worth a dollar. Right? Mm -hmm. But yet we live and die by the money. And I'll close with this. Whenever you have a good mindset, a healthy, wise mindset, and you have really good mechanics, systems. In my case, it was softwares and other things. One, two, three, the course, whatever it is to do it. Whenever you have a healthy mindset, good mechanics, the money will come looking for you. So that's all I got. I hope you guys enjoyed it. expand on what you do for your own mindset? Sure. So for me, God's a really important part of my life. And I'm a Christian. I grew up in Oklahoma. 
And I'm not the poster boy for Christianity. I screw <laughs> up all the freaking time. Um, <laughs> but it is, uh, it is a big part of my life. And so I pray daily. The well, first thing I do when I wake up in, in the morning is I thank God for the breath in my lungs and ability to be able to serve others. Um, one of the secrets in life, I think, is serving others because um, it gives you so much fulfillment. Um, but I thank God for the, the breath in my lungs for be able to walk, to be able to be healthy. And because I think we take things for granted. And when I do that, it puts me in this mindset of, okay, I'm just ready for what the day will bring me. You know, I'm not really stressed about all the things, all the minutia, everything that has to take, take place, even though it's there. Um, then I'm just, I'm just more prepared for that. And then I'll usually do a little bit of exercise, like 20 minutes or so of exercise. I'll drink one liter of water. Um, this is a really funny story. I bought refrigerators almost in every room in my house. That's kind of funny. But <laughs> it's because I noticed I wouldn't, I got laid just the way I'm wired. I would get uh, I would get lazy and not go to the refrigerator and you have filtered water. I just have to go to the cabinet, get a glass, put it in there, and I wasn't drinking water as much. But whenever there was p plastic water bottles uh, readily available, I would grab one like all the time. So I said, why don't I put a refrigerator in every room of the house, <laughs> like little ones? So that's one thing for in terms of mindset of like. Um, I think that's called inevitability thinking. Whenever it's there, and you make it inevitable that it'll happen, yeah. instead of you depending on yourself to do it. Um, reading, reading books, you know, read the Bible is really important to me. I, I probably read it once a week. Um, I think of the Bible for me as a living word, so it t I can read the same verse many times and it'll say something different to me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, listening to music, whether that's cool praise and worship music or just some cool techno to kind of get me in the in the groove. Um, You're a musician, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So, does that help? Yeah, that does. Yeah. Any other questions? What what product do you sell? The uh, you were talking about, like I think Pat was telling you, you sell like a short sale management program or something. Yeah. So we have short sellology is the um, short sellology is the um, kind of the umbrella, if you will, for a lot of different products that we have. We have um, our loss mitigation service. <clears throat> so that's that's one service that we have. In terms of products, I have Short Sale Fundamentals course, which I always say that Nathan was my best student <laughs> because uh, we actually show a, 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 a price tag of his dad actually purchasing it. Um, yeah. We make fun of each other all the time. Uh, <laughs> so I have the course. I have um, lots of ebooks. We have this ebook called The Magic BPO Success Secrets. Now we're almost 2,000 of those sold. Um, just a little ebook for 67 bucks. Uh, we have coaching that we sell. Um, we have the software that actually we changed our technology partner, but if you go to Short Sell Automator, that's what we're using right now. Um, and we promoted you know, to Nathan's list. Uh, Nathan and Chris are real good friends, and we did we did a lot of money, you know, with them. Cause we, when you have a list of people and they're on your, we call them a tribe. So when you have those people that are behind you and they get your emails daily, I mean, I, mean, I, I send out an email every day. Five a day. It's not, not five, an email a day, <laughs> and sometimes two. And I get, pro I probably get, um, I mean, we, we definitely get every week at least 500 unsubscribes, every week. But the people that stay, they, they love it, mm -hmm. you know? So I'd rather have someone that's like, can give me a little slack and be like, send an email every day. Well, okay, if you don't want it, get off my list. You, you opted in, you know? I didn't say put a gun to your head, opt into my list. So, um, you know, so that, that, uh, we have that, but back to your question, you know, that's what, yeah, we have the courses, the coaching, the, the uh, loss mitigation, the software. Um, I actually buy and sell houses in Oklahoma City, too. I probably flip three to five houses a month. I have everything on autopilot. I'm really big on systems, obviously. And so when my leads come in, they go to a realtor that I work with. He goes and checks to make sure that everything looks good. He goes and meets with the homeowner. They fill, fill our thing out. He faxes into our intake department. Our loss mitigator gets it, talks to the bank. I'm not notified until really whether or not it's approved or not. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you again. Any other uh, questions? How do you handle, I hate to use the term the haters, but you obviously yeah. you probably get a lot of challenges. Everyone, everyone's got their own opinion. Yeah. How do you handle the negative ones? 
I usually want to make them an example because the haters are usually uneducated. Um, whenever you spend some time with someone that is your quote hater, I think Nathan does this too. Like, Nathan's really good at that. You call the person up, like in my case, I mean, you can call them up and you can talk to them and they freak out first off because they think you're some rock star or something. They're like, they think you're a deity that doesn't exist on the internet or whatever, you know, but you call them up. And they're like, uh, uh, it's like, yeah, you got this, you just sent me this email. That's really jacked up. I mean, I want to talk to you about it. Why would you think that? And they're like, uh, so they're just, and they like, oh yeah, well you don't do this or this and that. It's like, well, let me show you what I do. I mean, I mean, do you want me to send you a course? I mean, I'll show you what I do. I can show you right here on page 15 and I do this. And I can let you talk to my realtor. We do this. Or, you know, I'll let you log into a software or do this. And every single person that has ever been a quote hater turns into a fan. Questions. So you basically are saying you go proactively yeah. approaching them. I actually get excited like Nathan oh, does. Yeah, I just kill all the kindness, but I can't wait to call this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, we kind of have fun with our little uh, our little groups. They have these JV joint, you know, we have these kind of groups that have these lists and we kind of have fun because everyone gets these people, right? So if you record those people and they say some really funny stuff on their voicemails and then you call them up again and you're like, yeah, you know, when you record that, they like, they like crouch. They're like, I'm sorry, man, you're the greatest. Oh, yeah, I got the nastiest voicemail ever for <laughs> customer service. Yeah. They like, forwarded to me, and you're just like, that's good. So yeah. And I just called them up, sent them the course for free. Yeah. I was like, I didn't mean it. Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> man. <laughs> so, any, any more questions? I want to ask for just a quick review just to make sure I did a good job. What are the three M's for success? What are the four things you need to do when you're looking at anything to do in your life? Premise, Premise, Premise vision, 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 purpose, purpose, purpose strategy. strategy. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. If y'all are looking for mechanics, Bill is doing his MREA class.